Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today is Thursday, and that means one thing, we've got an exciting new update from the Space Engineers developers, and you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on in this week's update. Now the first thing I want to talk about is that there is a new post on the blog explaining planets in a little bit more detail. I might cover that in a separate video, but apart from that, they showed some of the different planets and how they plan on running the night cycle. Very interesting, some early sort of tree prototypes as well, but let's actually get onto the things in this update. Now the first thing I want to show you is the new sort of scenario features, and these allow us to create our own sort of deathmatch and free-for-all sort of deathmatch modes. So if I hit you on the keyboard here, what you'll see is we have some new settings. All other players lost, we have limited lives, and leave the game area. Now some of these are before, uh, we've seen before, but we haven't seen all others lost before, and we haven't seen limited lives. So we can limit the lives, and we can also make it very clear that all the other players have actually lost the game, so that will become in the winning condition and allow that player to win. So that's going to be really cool building some of our own deathmatch modes. Let's have a look at some of the other features. Now, the first thing I want to show you that's really simple is how to set up the limited lives option. So if we go to this little tab here next to the limited lives, once we've selected it, you'll see the little star, and as we click on that, obviously the messages come up saying you have zero lives left. So that'll happen when you've lost all these lives and you can select the number of lives that you want each player to have. Now, I don't want you to limit this to just a simple sort of deathmatch mode. You could use this sort of setup to build your own sort of scenarios. So if someone fails your test or your puzzle three or four times and they die, you could have that lost condition up and reset and back to the start. So there's multiple ways you could use this on your sort of scenarios. Now, let's really take a look at this med bay. We've got a new scenario feature added to it so if we go and press K you'll see that we have ownership assignment now this assigns the actual object or this med bay to the first player who loads into the actual scenario so that's very interesting to sort of build out and surprise so that player then can reassign it so he can actually have more of his faction members or it could just be his own private one so no one else spawns at this point and that can all be assigned from the menu really cool so I've started the game now up in scenario mode. You can see in the top right the lives that I actually have remaining to remind the player that he's got to be a little bit more careful. So if I press return or delete, there we go. You can actually see I commit suicide and it counts down in 3, 2, 1. And the lives bar at the top right is also kicked in as well. So if I do this quickly enough, I can actually have a look at some of the spawn bays. And you can see that spawn bay is actually being claimed by myself. So every time I die now, I'll have more spawn bays actually available to me. But at this moment, I can actually spawn on them. So this could be a way of actually, so when you die, you get another place to spawn and so on and so on. So let's actually respawn, say for instance, at respawn bay 2. I have one life left, and if I die now, what's going to happen? Let's see. You've lost, you have zero lives left. Perfect for some sort of tournament or game modes you're having. But if you're playing with your friends, not really something that's super necessary. So now we're going to move on to the next really cool setting. This allows you to set how many times a projector block will actually spawn a ship in. So say for instance a certain spot might have a certain ship in, and you only want that to spawn in two times. So let's actually go to the menu, and if we access this with K, we grab up our control panel and we find our small projector. So there's the projector. And we actually scroll down. You'll notice the scenario settings here. So we can directly spawn a projection by pressing that button. We can inst or obviously using insta build here. So if I untick that, you'll see that these settings actually come off. But if I tick that once again, you'll see the number of projections I can set from all the way up to 999 back to infinite and then all the way down to zero or one. Well, I think one's the minimum. And you can also see the number of blocks that allow someone to spawn through that projector you can set there as well so that's really cool so people can still spawn in their own ships but if they've got a really big something or a big, really big large ship you don't want to spawn in you can limit that of course to 200 really cool i like that idea and i think it's going to do quite well when it comes into spawning the projection you can also see when i go under the ships amount of blocks so i'm actually under 200 you can see it will go gray the spawn protection I'll spawn projection and then if I go over it it'll allow me to spawn it and once I spawn it you'll hear it click into position and I now have a ship that I can actually fly around with and I can keep placing them as long as I don't run out of that selected number pretty cool setting I don't know how it will work in the actual deathmatch modes we'll have to see now the final thing I want to show you in this update video is something that's extremely useful if you've got like a capture the ship or you've got an ingoing battle inside a ship or it's just a simple capture the flag objective where you don't want it to be destroyed by gunfire or explosives. 
then if we just print off a ship like so we'll print that ship there and then we'll go to this menu and you can see by pressing the info tab we have destructible blocks and we can tick this if we tick this it says toggles destructible blocks only for this grid if the destructible blocks are disabled in this world setting this is ignored only available in scenarios so there you go so let's actually enable that and we'll hop in aboard the ship so that should be indestructible well let's check that out for ourselves so we've equipped ourselves some rockets and we're firing at that platform and you can see it's, it's not being destroyed so that is a very good start and it means that no one could spawn camp and destroy your spawning point but what happens if we enable it we'll, we'll do a quick test technically it should just be able to be blown up now info we tick that box like so and we fly back to our little ship if we can hop aboard and i don't think we can there we can and we fire some rockets you can see now it's receiving damage it's sparking things are being destroyed so that's going to be another great feature in stopping some of the base camping and other scenarios. Especially if you've got a larger server, you can have this on the start area and it'll stop um, griefers from destroying it and causing problems. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Quite a small update, but still quite a lot of useful features.